Hello everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda. Previously, when we left off, we went into Lord Jabu Jabu and we finished uh, the 7th uh, dungeon. Uh, and now, we have some lovely Zors to talk to. You have done so much for us. Our seas are clean and all is well. I offer you a symbol of heroism, the Zora scale. And we got it. Thank you, Zora. So, uh, very simple. Uh, we now have the ability to do some cool stuff. Um, which we're gonna want to do in the past, but we want to do it in the past in a different area. Um, because essentially, what now is we can um, kind of just like go places. <laughs> like there's like a few little places we can go. Right, we had the Harp of Ages now. I forgot about that. Um, we have the good shit now. I love the Harp of Ages. It's so nice. Uh, although you won't be able to watch it anymore because it was like uh, a few years ago, like four years ago. I did do a randomizer of Zelda Ages, which if you want to see randomizers, that might just be a Patreon exclusive thing. Um, but back in the day when I did a randomizer, I started with only the harps. I got to like harp three or something and I was just like, wait, what? Uh, and it was insane because I had to play the entire game with just the harp and it was actually really hard because I had to pinpoint, lo uh, locate. Uh, where to go because I had to do the three men building the bridge quest with only the harp. Thankfully I had Dimitri as my uh, animal companion so it wasn't that hard I think. The sword scale! So your link you may pass. I don't know what lays ahead but I must ask you I must not ask why you want to pass. Anyway, I'm also going to make sure that any little kid who wants to get in here can also do it, as long as they can hold their breath. Um, but yeah. So essentially, this is a really cool moment, uh, where there's a pirate ship. Um, however, there's also this cave over here that I really, really am interested in looking at. Okay. Just a ring. Fair enough. Um... There we go. Do. Tales tell of giant ruins out in the east of the sea or no return. If you go out into the ruins out east, you can never return. Why do we all sound the same? It's probably actually because they're skeletons, and skeletons don't have tongues, and therefore cannot have different inflections in their voice. Captain isn't thinking about a thing. Oh long how we've been adrift. Hello, Captain. Sailing the seas is every man's dream. It was great to do so gallantly to sail off to my dreams. But we got stuck in this sea of storms and we can't get out. Ha! Ah, you got the Zora scale, sea charm. Eh, hey, that could help calm this sea of storms. How about you give me that Zora scale? Sure, man. Thank ye, you're a good man. Ahoy, mateys, we're off to Uldrum, the land of seasons. Aye, aye, sir. Thank ye, now we can escape these seas. Take this as a sign of, of, oh, me thanks. It's the jewel called the Tokay Eyeball. It's said to be the thing that opens the way to the ancient tomb. I don't know if it's true or not, though. We have the Tokay Eyeball, the treasure of the deep. Uh, and this is actually something I really freaking like. You really helped us out. Eh, hey, we found that Tokyo eyeball on Crescent Island. Maybe you should head there, eh? Well, for now. Ahoy, mateys! Aye, aye, sir. That was my whole horse impression. But, um, I really, really love that because, um, if you play ages first, you get that message, and it's like, oh, they're, they're heading to Holodrum, but they're doing it in the past, so it takes them so long to get to Holodrum, uh, because they're in, like, from, going from the past to the present. Like, there's so many little tidbits like that that really make this game uh, amazing, in my opinion. 
Um, however, we will continue our ability of being God by just traveling the map immediately. Oh, actually, there's no sense seed location there yet. No. We'll go to the second best place. But, um... It, I always thought it was... So, almost fell into that one. I always thought it was super sick that, um... Those guys were just there, essentially, and, like, they knew, like, everything. The game seems to be running a bit choppy. Are you going to close the window I told you to close? Yeah, it looks to be running really choppily. Why is that? Try some things to see if we can fix that because it really shouldn't be looking choppy like that. It should be running basically like perfect. Why is it? Okay, it's running. It looks like it's running a lot better. Show your courage, wisdom, and power. The road to the past shall then open. Okay, overall, it seems like it's running better now. So I think it was just a small little hiccup that the game was having. Did you see that jump, though? So this is the Room of Courage. Oh, actually, I don't even need that. So, you can kind of just trick those things into not being able to chase you, uh, which is awesome every time you can do it. Yeah, no, we're going to need the Rock's Feather. Um... At least we know now. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, we did it. Whew, that was a little venture and a half. Actually, because we're going into water, we want this on A. So we can use it. Oh, right, we have the mermaid flippers still, so we have to walk around like an idiot. Okay. That's right, and this is how you get to um, the final dungeon of the game. The thing that's interesting is this dungeon is called the Ancient Tomb, but it's in the past. So it's like, it's ancient even for the time period it's in. And that's kind of interesting to think about that. A tomb can be ancient, even though it's like a hundred years in the past. It's like, just how ancient is this tomb for it to be considered still ancient by that time period's time? Back when Lionels didn't fuck around. They still don't, but they're more like just boss things. In this game, they're just like, ah, oh, we'll just chuck them a few of them on the screen. Level 8, Ancient Tomb. Um... Awesome. Okay, tell me what I need to do, Mr. Bird. Open your ears to the sound of a sword against the wall. You don't have to say it so bluntly. Maybe they don't mean here. Oh, well, cheating will get us far, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Why even have that be the puzzle if you're not even going to utilize it properly? The puzzle should have just been like, like I understand like that has to happen so then it can teach you like, yo, you know, that's a thing. But I feel like it did it way better in uh, Zelda Link's Awakening. I'm hoping that the music audio is still decent. Okay, why do you have to just use so many bombs in this room? I feel like if I were to make a uh, Zelda game that's like this style, I would not want you to have to use like so many different resources just to do something so simple. This one's a cute little puzzle, um, because it's essentially just 
you have to do it in a very specific, like, you know, like, oh, one of them has the cane, one of them has the switch hook. Uh, and it's a cool little way to also be able to be like, hey, do you have all these items for, like, a randomizer kind of thing? And then the tomb opens. I remember this one being a bit of a pain of the ass. Um, so I do think we might have to spend a few episodes on this one. Because uh, I remember it not being the funnest thing to go through. However, that was when I was younger, and I'm older now, so I should probably be more decrepit in my age, so we'll see how that goes. Um, small key. Well, we can use that in the key uh, block thing that we found earlier. Uh, I'm just going to kill this guy and lose our heart like an idiot. And then gain our heart. Yeah, okay. I just like, I had a th feeling that it would just be like a key or something. Like, yeah, dungeon map. I just had a feeling it would be like a dungeon map or something. Because, you know, it's Zelda. You know, it's probably likely that when you kill a room of things, you're going to get something. Okay, so that's to go back. Is there any secret little... No, there isn't. Okay. It's just good to make sure, um, at the end of the day... That's right, it has one of these situations where the entire dungeon is basically just actually two spinner panels. And it's all about like manipulating the spinner panels to work in a very specific way. My least favorite thing. I think that was part of the last dungeon and we spent like ages on it because I kept trying to freaking uh, game the system. I am recording this uh, a bit in the future. I want to finish this series of Zelda and then I want to go into doing um, Code Veronica uh, and then like not finish but like do 10 episodes of Code Veronica have them out like, I just want to get a lot of the content content done um, so then I can focus on the challenge one portion of my channel because I'm not gonna be able to do PVZ you know by this time PVZ zombies uh, I zombie is probably done already like uh, we, we got a lot of content, but like it's not like you can go forever. We got a key. Anything on this side of the room? Obviously you're meant to use Pegasus Seeds, but I don't really care. Uh, one thing I do really like about this dungeon is the fact that it's all about um, the upgraded power gloves, which is such an interesting idea. Like, power gloves are such an innocuous kind of, like, item that you kind of like, ah, uh, that's the dungeon item? I don't know, maybe... I was like, maybe. We got an extra key, but what does that even lead to in this dungeon right now? Because what we really need is to have that be flipped.
because of Batman. Um. There you go. Cody looks at puzzle for five minutes and says, "Yeah, I don't know how that works." Um. I'm an idiot, okay, good to know. That is a clever way of making that less annoying, I guess. Because I think there was a diamond rocky thing that you could switch with, but because they blocked it with that, uh, uh, like, you know, fire pit thingy, it means I can't actually interact with it. Yeah, it's right there. Which means you only can interact with it on this side. Which is pretty smart. I like that reference. Okay, I, I like that reference. Just like, it's the ancient tomb, so let's do some like things that ancient Zelda would do. Oh, that's such a nice little... Have we done the tiger yet? Or is that in seasons? Like the crazy blade tiger that's really annoying. I think that's in seasons. I think that's the fifth dungeon seasons mini boss. Because like in my head I was like, I don't remember what the mini boss of this place is. I'm just really hoping that it isn't that one. Um, okay. Huh, is there seriously nothing in this room? Oh no, there's a way down. You have to position yourself. They knew, like that's a, that that's a such a fun little puzzle. Like, oh, you have to jump in a really nice little way to be able to get the puzzle done. And then you get to go down the floor, yay! Oh fuck, Gibdos. My army of Gibdos. Whatever the CDI Zelda games are like. Wanted to make sure. Oh, so he literally is just fucking Ganon. Oh, but he has bullshit Ganon. Okay. Oh, he 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 really like being bullshit Ganon.
You have to just be directly above or under for it to even work. We're only one hit away, that's actually crazy. Gimme. Um, okay. Um, no, I don't think that they're a puzzle. These ones, though, probably fucking are. Oh, wait, no, there's more rooms to explore. That's right. That's the entire point of this dungeon, is you have to get to, get to the four corners and get like four little talismans that go into this little thingamajig and then you're like, cool. Really don't know why there's two layers of that. I wonder if it's because they found some exploit and they're like, well... No, because they couldn't have, because they would they would have had to do so much more shit if there was an exploit. Okay. It would be cool if there was like two mini bosses or something, or like kind of like what they did in uh, Catfish More for. Uh, Link's Awakening, where it was like you battle the same boss, but it gets uh, continuously harder over time. So the first boss fight with the Reaper is like the Reaper can, uh, you know, he can swing his thing, but it's like not the craziest. And then like the next time, it's like, um, oh, he can shoot the fake balls, and then the next time he can split into like a few copies of himself and then do it. We got the slate. Ancient words are written on it. So we have one of the four slates. Uh, saying the word slate reminds me of a Kingdom Hearts chain of memories. Good game, that one. I remember playing it on the good old Game Boy Advance emulator because I could not afford fucking chain by, uh, uh, whatever that one's called again. Oh, God. It's doing the thing where it's stuttering, I don't know why. It's because it's not running at 60 FPS for some reason. Okay, so there's multiple different ways around. Good to know. One's least favorite enemies. Well, for now, we'll just... Extremely suspect of this room. What is it with the Seasons games and having this exact puzzle in both of the 8th dungeons? But I moved so fast that the game couldn't even handle it. That returns us to that, which we don't need to do currently. Um, which means we have to redo this small area again. But that's fine, it really isn't much. But actually we're going to do that in the next episode. So I hope you all had an absolute wonderful day. I hope you liked the beginning of the Ancient Tomb. And I hope you all stick around and watch the rest of it. So I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.